All right, guys, so welcome back into the Round Ball Daily Studios. My name is Cal Staten, and in this video, it was pretty simple. Just wanted to answer the question, is Princeton running the Princeton offense? Is that what is making them successful and en route to a Sweet 16 for the first time in school history? Are they running that Pete Carrill ball movement, backdoor cut, take time off the shot clock offense, or is it something else? Do they just have dudes? Let's check it out. Let's see how Princeton's doing this, how they reach the Sweet 16 for the first time. All right, so when you think about Princeton, you think about Pete Carrill, you think about back cuts, and you'd be interested to see they are still doing a lot of that stuff. Let's take a look here as they get the ball, they get the screen here, and then you'll see back cut right to the basket right there. But here, Tosin Walnut, he's the guy, he's this guy. He had a great game against Arizona, one of the, the big reasons why they won this game. When you take a look at him, he just makes an individual play, drives past the defender, forces the help to come up, and then he's just going to drop it off to his guy who has the easy finish right there. But this is why it's a little bit different here because Mitch Henderson, the head coach, he's been there since 2011. He's not quite Pete Carrillo, and they took advantage of a matchup here in this game with the Walmart. You'll see uh, hit the side, hit the wing, and there was a little screen underneath. As I, I don't think we saw it here in this highlight, but a screen underneath as it is, a little action underneath here. The Walmart's going to come off here, and this is just perfectly designed Princeton basketball. And he goes one-on-one, -on -one and he's got the matchup that he likes. They know that he's good enough to make this move and score, and he does it right there, and we'll see a lot more of that here in this video. All right, not much to say about this one. This one's just about having a dude, as we're going to see. They have some dudes on their team. Here it is, Tosin Walmart. He was the guy in this uh, game against Arizona. Look at this. Not much to say. Just an athletic play. Just comes down. Nobody picks him up. Throws it down. That's Princeton basketball right there. It's just barely afternoon. All right, and once again here, we'll see it. Another easy dunk for Princeton. Same action here as you'll see. Get the ball to the wing. Have that little screen down low. They get the matchup. No matchup. No contest right there as Aroma throws it down. And then again, this is crazy because this is Princeton against Arizona. Princeton, an Ivy League school against Arizona. And watch what happens. Not that play, but this one. Here's a Woma again. He's just going one-on-one. -on -one. They just give him the ball and let him go to work. And he just outworks this guy down there. Nothing they can do about him. Unbelievable with this guy. And then take a look right here, too. He brings the ball up the court. Uh, next play, next play down. Just the crossover right there. It looks like KD or somebody, Brandon Ingram. Just going right in there. I mean, unbelievable when you take a look at it. It really does look like Brandon Ingham just brings the ball up the court. This guy's six eight. He's a junior. Uh, this is not an Ivy League player, and you wonder. I mean, they won the league. They weren't really even the best team in the league all season, but they got a guy like that who can do that. That can win you some games in March. I mean, take a look at it. This guy averaged 14.8 points per game in the regular season for Princeton. He's going off, and he was the biggest reason why they won against Arizona. And just one more play from him. I mean, there were other guys that made plays, and we're going to see this kid in the yellow uh, sneakers right here in a second because he's going to come up big against Missouri. He's going to big, be a big theme in that second-round game. But you take a look here. I mean, they just can't guard him. Ten minutes to go. Nice spin move. Fakes one way, goes the other. I mean, it's just – just a master class by him, and he was the best player on the floor. All right, again, and the idea behind this video is, is this the Princeton office offense? Is this motion? Is this passing that's making this happen? Take a look at this. Early on in this game against Missouri, this sets the tone. Ryan Langborg, you're going to hear his name a lot in this video. He just jays it up from here. This is like Damian Lillard, uh, Steph Curry, Jimmer Fredette in college range. He just pulls up. Pete Maravich style, he just jays it and catch. When that's going down at 3-2 early in the game, you know you might be in trouble here. And again, not too much strategy here. You do see Princeton do this in this game against Missouri. They got four out, one in. Awoma, you know that they're going to be paying attention to him. But this is Langborg. This is just a dude making shots, making plays. You take a look at it. They kick it around. He does fake real quick, that little ball fake. But then he's all net. It barely even makes the net move. It doesn't even make the net move. Just straight cash. And again, if you don't know, now you know. I mean, from the logo, this is Princeton. I mean, I'm not lying about this, kid. There were 14 seconds on the shot clock here. I mean, what do you do if you're Missouri? He's launching from the March Madness logo. That's like the first round right here. He's a one seed. He's pulling up and launching it. I mean, if he's going to hit these shots, and this is what happened in this game as they blew out Missouri, but from the logo, just straight cash. When you're feeling it like that, it's hard to defend. Don't blame Missouri at all. 
And then, I mean, when you're making shots, all good shooters will tell you this kind of stuff opens up. He's able to just go through on the drive. Look at this. I mean, that's just – this is an Ivy League dude doing this. Take a look at this drive. Beautiful little step-through move. I thought he was going to go behind the back, but he just goes right there for the jam. Unreal. And here, another example. They go four guards out here. They got uh, a woman in the middle here. Guys from Newcastle, England. Interesting. Interesting side note. Might be a Magpies fan there, but – you take a look at here, you're going to have the entry pass, but they know this matchup. This is one that they want. You can see the size in here, advantage that they have inside, and they've gotten the court entirely spread out um, just to take advantage and exploit this matchup, and obviously you can kick to shooters. It's just a great design, as we've seen many times, and all he does is just go straight to the cup, doesn't even utilize any post moves. He just goes straight to the cup, goes right around the guy. Easy money, as Shaq likes to say, barbecue chicken, and uh, – and gets the and one as well. And that's when Princeton fans were feeling it. Nice bounce entry pass, too. And he just got the size advantage, draws the contact and the foul. And again here, this isn't really necessarily the classic Princeton offense, but they're going to go four out again, just exploiting Missouri, which looks like it's in a zone here, two, three zone. They kick it to Langborg in the corner. There's so much open space here, and that could just be exploited by him. And you take a look at why, because this guy over here is going to sit here, uh, and that's going to open up a potential lob. As this defender is going to be left kind of in no man's land. As you see, he gets into the paint. This guy has to step up here. He's got to make a decision. Does he give up the lob or does he go defend the three? If he doesn't defend the three, he's going to be left wide open. And that leaves him with plenty of options here. He can lob it to him. He can go up and, and try to get the shot off. Or he can kick it out, the drive and kick for a three. And you see what happens. Their only hope is to draw the charge right here. They don't do that. He commits to defend the lob, probably a smart move in college, but that leaves the shooter wide open, and Princeton was just hitting them all night, and this is straight cash, and you see how that happens. That's how they killed Missouri in this game. All right, this one we got to go volume up because this, this is just an example of a dude making a play, an athlete making a play. Ryan Langborg here for Princeton. Let's just let's just listen and watch this beautiful basketball. And so is Brown. Got to right run. Got to run. Got to run. Got to run some direct set points. He hit him with the ooh wee. He hit him with the ooh wee. Unbelievable. That's what's happening here. Creighton gonna have to defend that as well as the nice set de designs and plays. And this is Ryan Langborg feeling himself, feeling it right here. Another. Just basketball play, just nice individual move. Hits him with the James Harden step back. Really? He's feeling it right there. I mean, really? If he's doing that, you know the game's over. That's a 15-point game. That's a move you do in a 15-point game. And he made a March Madness memory for himself all night. And then the final one here, Princeton up 59-43. Uh, Blake Peters, he's got the ball here. Just going to have a high screen. You want to know why Princeton's in the Sweet 16? It's stuff like this, too. Just a handoff right there. Two guys underneath the screen. Got some space, but he's going to launch from there. I mean, come on. You're going to hit that? I mean, you're going to win most games if you're shooting the ball like this. And they did that against Missouri and dominated, as you see again. Can they do this again against Creighton? I think that's going to be the question. But you can see the offense. It's not just the – play design it's not just the backdoor cuts it's not just the motion it's everything it's guys making plays it's guys individually making plays I think that's why Princeton is dangerous that's why they're in the sweet 16 going to be a little bit different against Creighton especially with the big man Kalkbrenner and some of the athletes they have as well but that's how they got here all right we're back in the round ball daily studios here full screen um, as you can see it's not just the set offense it's not just the back cuts the motion offense it's guys doing crazy things out there it's guys making deep logo threes it's guys doing james harden step backs it's guys doing rip through moves going through five defenders and making passes inside it's uh tosin and moa being un unstoppable and looking like brandon ingram out there princeton is a dangerous team this is a good team with a lot of players who can make individual plays and i think it's going to be interesting and tough for creighton possibly they've got some guys on their side too who can do that as well but they're going to have to scout them well and, and definitely defend that three-point shot and make sure that they they're guarding that four out offense a lot of things to consider 
if you're Doug McDermott right now, and uh, I think that's or Greg McDermott, Doug is his son in the NBA right now, but um, yeah, a lot of stuff to worry about if you're uh, watching Princeton, not just the Pete Carrill type of thing like it was back in the day. Thanks, guys, for watching this breakdown video on roundballdaily.com. We'll hopefully have some more as March Madness goes on. Enjoy the Sweet 16. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.